I don't know if you remember all the way back to last month, but last month I told you about a miracle that happened in the Bible. Four guys, four people came along with their friend who couldn't walk and they carried his mat up to the roof of the house and then they made space in the roof of the house and they dropped the guy, or they sh I should say they lowered it. They didn't drop the guy. They lowered the, the, the guy's mat down and onto the floor to see Jesus. That's actually the story we're going to be looking at today because this guy who couldn't walk, there was no way that he was gonna get in to see Jesus. Not because Jesus didn't wanna see him, but because Jesus was surrounded by people and this guy was unable to walk. He couldn't drag himself. He was completely dependent on others. Thank goodness he had four friends who cooperated together to get him into a position where he could see Jesus. That's our story, and we're gonna get into it in just a second. But first, let's take a look at our memory verse, which is found in Ecclesiastes chapter four, verse nine. Here's what it says. Two people are better than one. They can help each other in everything they do. So here we face an opportunity to do something, and these four friends went to the mat, literally, for their friend who couldn't walk. Take a look.
I'm Haley, and nothing cheers me up like a good sing-along. Of course, sing-alongs work a lot better when you're not the only one in the room. Sorry, Lauren. <laughs> they really require cooperation. Cooperation is working together to do more than you can do alone. Sing-alongs bring people together. They make people happy and they can make the world a better place. I love it when musicians get together for a sing-along to help raise money for other people. This one's for the children. There was a farmer had a dog and Bingo was his name. Oh, B I N G O B I N G O B I N G O. You see? Different people with different talents all coming together with the same goal, to help people in need. That's major cooperation. Today's story is about a person who was in need and the friends who worked together to help him. Maybe my musician friends can help me with my sing-along. Row, row, row your boat gently down the stream. Merrily, 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 life is but a dream. Life is but a dream. Much better together. I'll see you soon. Bye. The Bible. It's 66 books of history, stories, letters, and poetry that fit together to form God's one big story. The epic adventure of how he created us and loves us so much that he made a way to rescue us. As we travel through the Bible, from Genesis to Revelation, we discover people who met God and found their lives changed forever. Now, for an amazing story, inspired by the book of Luke, chapter five, verses 17 through 26. Imagine living in Judea 2,000 years ago. If you got sick, there were very few doctors. If you couldn't see or hear or walk, there was no one you could turn to for help. Please, help me. But when Jesus began to travel and teach and heal, suddenly, there was hope, a way to get better and start life all over again. Stories of Jesus reached a man in Capernaum who couldn't walk and his four friends. Let's call them Leo, Mike, Raph, and Donnie. Jesus is in town, right here in Capernaum, over at Joe's house. Ginormous crowd, dude. The man who couldn't walk tried hard not to get his hopes up. I can't even get there. Must let's fight my way through a crowd. You don't have to. Cause we got you. Ready? Dude, one, two, three, lift. <laughs> the four friends each grabbed the corner of the man's mat. Together they carried him out of the house and down the dusty road. Soon, they could hear the sounds of a large crowd. There's Joe's place, oh yeah. What's happening? People jammed in 20 deep around the door. We got religious leaders, teachers, poor people, rich people, standing room only. Actually, there's no standing room, dude. Only room is up. Sure enough, around the back of the house, the four friends discovered a narrow staircase up to the flat roof. Wait, how is this any better? And down, dudes. Hold it. We can't even hear Jesus. Oh, we can't hear him yet. That's about to change. Help me pry up this clay. It's time to raise the roof. Within minutes, the four friends pried up large sections of packed clay to reveal a rough thatch of sticks connecting the roof beams. <laughs> Gotta bust these out. And voila. As dust and beams of sunlight spilled into the room, the four friends could see the shot crowd gaping up at them. The only one who didn't seem shocked was the man at the front, watching them with deep, kind eyes. Jesus! Hey, all y'all people down there, get ready, cause our friend is coming through. The four friends each grabbed the corner of the mat and began to lower their friend into the rough hole they had created. Hey, what's going on? Hey, wait, you can't do this. 
In spite of the confusion, the man who couldn't walk was finally lowered to the floor, right in front of Jesus. The nerve! Just look at all this damage. Jesus wasn't looking at the damage or the shocked crowd. His eyes went from the man on the floor to the four faces peering through the hole in the roof. In their eyes, he'd read what they'd done and how certain they were that he could heal their friend. He saw their faith. Then, Jesus smiled at the man on the floor. Friend, your sins are forgiven. <laughs> the religious leaders didn't dare speak their thoughts aloud, but inside their heads, they were nearly screaming. Who is this fellow to say such an evil thing? Who can forgive sins but God alone? Jesus could tell exactly what was going on in their heads and hearts. Why are you thinking these things in your hearts? Is it easier to say, your sins are forgiven? Or to say, get up and walk? He wouldn't dare. Well, at least everyone will see he's a fraud. Jesus had God's power to meet the greatest need of the man who couldn't walk by forgiving his sins. But that wasn't something the religious leaders could see. So, Jesus gave them something they could see. I want you to know the Son of Man has authority on earth to forgive sins. Jesus looked down again at the man on the mat, right into his eyes. Get up, take your mat and go home. It seemed that everyone, from the four friends on the roof to the people jammed in the doorways and windows, was holding their breath. The man who couldn't walk sat up. Then he stumbled to his feet. His friends cheered. Oh, you got this! Deep breath. Baby steps. Bring it, dude. The man took a step, a hop, a leap. I, I can walk. I can walk. Praise God. The man grabbed his mat and danced out of the house to meet his friends for a group hug. The crowd was amazed and filled with wonder. Most unusual thing I've seen in all my years. Well, praise God. Praise God. Through the power of God and the help of a few friends, the man who once couldn't walk now ran home on his own two feet. His life forever changed. Whenever Jesus was in town, people hurried to see him. The word was that Jesus could miraculously heal people. So the man who couldn't walk needed help to get to Jesus. And his friends went above and beyond to make that happen. They saw a need and they worked together to do something about it. And don't miss this, don't miss this. Jesus saw that the man had a different kind of need. It's the same need that all of us have. The man needed to be forgiven of his sins. He got the miraculous healing he was looking for, plus he was forgiven. You and I can have that same forgiveness because of what Jesus did on the cross. So there are needs all around us, in our homes, in our schools, in our communities, even the world. And you can do something about it, but you don't have to do it alone, right? We India Bingo! You can work together with others. Maybe you can form a team to help clean up your park or help out in your neighborhood. Maybe you could put on a show to help raise money for people in need in your own community or in other countries. Sometimes needs seem too big to tackle alone. So why not work together? That's the one thing to remember today. Work together to help someone in need. Ask God to help you see the needs all around you. And together, we can make the world a better place. I'll see you next time. Rock on, people! Y'all come back now, you hear? Like, bye! <laughs> what they said. What an amazing tale, right? I mean, Jesus did his part to heal the man, 
But think about the hard work that these four people who did, who weren't Jesus, they didn't have miraculous strength. They were trying to move this guy from the ground to the roof and then lower him in. And oh, by the way, the worst thing that could happen in that scenario is that you drop him, right? Of course, he didn't get dropped because his friends cooperated. They worked together and they became a part of something amazing. They were able to see Jesus do the impossible for our humanity and heal this man on the mat. Pretty remarkable stuff. Now that's all we have time for today, but look for opportunities this week to cooperate with one another. Look for opportunities this week to find people that can make you better. Don't make it always about yourself. Look for people who can make you better. That's your challenge. I hope you'll accept it. All right, we're going to pray and then we'll be finished until next time. Heavenly Father, thank you for our time together. I thank you for these boys and girls and I thank you for the opportunity to cooperate with one another. And uh, we thank you for the story today about the four folks who were able to do just remarkable work to get this man who couldn't walk before Jesus. And then Jesus did his part by uh, doing the, the miraculous, by healing this guy's legs and allowing him to walk. It's really just an incredible story and it's an incredible picture of what happens when we work together in your name. So Father, I pray that this week we would work together in your name and we would look for opportunities to see what you can do when we learn to cooperate. We pray it in Jesus' name. Amen. We'll see you next time.